Shalom and Grand Rising, friends. I'm out in the garden today and I wanted to show you some of the uh, things I have growing out here uh, in this uh, fall and winter time. Most of the stuff I hear goes dormant. You can see here is a big whorehound plant. Right next to that, we have a white sage that does pretty good. White sage is pretty good, like to zone eight. Zone eight, you gotta kind of be uh, iffy with white sage because they're kind of sensitive. Um, but I notice I've covered up some with pots just to make sure they didn't die back. And then some of them I didn't cover and they, they were fine. So white sage is doing well out here. Um, we have the yarrow growing. The yarrow kind of slows down in the winter, but it still steady grows. You can see some back here looking good. Some of the seeds from spring, summertime. These are some of the little dried seeds on top. Um, this is a nice one. It's called uh, Greek Mountain Tea. I didn't know how it would do, but I found that it grows in pretty cold areas, so it's doing fine out here. I, I don't cover it or anything. I just threw a lot of wood chips on top, mulch. Um, so hopefully in the spring, it'll just really jump up. I try to grow lots of medicinals. This, I believe, is a lemon cypress. It has a wonderful smell of lemon. Mmm, oh my gosh, yeah, it smells really good. And then... This is clove, I think red clover, right here. Kind of died down a little bit, uh, but you can see the cold hasn't affected. Now out here in 8B, we tend to stay about 30 degrees, between 40, I would say 40 and 30. Pretty steady throughout the winter time. Sometimes it'll drop to like the teens, but usually it's right in the 30s every day until spring and summer starts back up at night. Um, this is stinging nettles. I planted several roots in the fall and they started to wake up or sprout. And um, the cold really doesn't bother nettles. They're pretty a uh, cold hardy plant, but they kind of slow down. So hopefully springtime, they'll really jump up and take over this whole area here. sage does well sometimes i cover these with pots sometimes i don't and it doesn't really bother them at all they're doing really good out in the sun in the winter time in the spring i mean in the fall and winter so the sage uh plant i have here i kind of covered it with some some old brush just to keep some of the frost off of them and the white sage is doing really well I had one to die down, and I'm not really sure why it died down. Here's some more of the uh, sage that I cover with pots a lot, just because I don't want it to die all the way down, but it doesn't, it seems like it doesn't really matter. This was a nice white sage bush that I was growing, but it seemed to have died down. I don't know what happened. I did cover it with a pot once. Maybe I shouldn't have covered it. So he pretty kind of died. I'm hoping that he'll come right back from the roots in the springtime because his roots are pretty, pretty mulched. This is a cottonwood tree, has lost all his leaves. I love cottonwoods because we're on a large, uh, large property with several acres. So the cottonwood, a lot of people say cottonwood is invasive, but for me, it's not being on you know on acres of property and being in the desert cottonwoods help us to achieve shade and that will allow me to grow grow a lot of the plants the different herbs that require shade and you know and when the fall when the leaves fall you can use all the leaves for mulch so we're planning on putting cottonwoods all around especially the garden areas and they grow really fast this tree here was actually one of these little twigs so in the springtime i cut off a lot of little twigs root them root they root like in two weeks in water really fast plant them water them and you'll have a massive tree this is this tree here is only a year old 
This tree is probably 15 feet tall now. And you can see the base is quite thick. It's about four inches now down at the base. And that came from also a little tiny twig like this. So the cottonwood is a good option if you want to get trees fast. They're great for firewood. Um, some people say, oh, they're invasive and they'll take over and all that. But out here, we love them. And they have pretty green leaves in the summer that sparkle in the sunlight. <laughs> That's how you can kind of tell the cottonwoods. They look like, like sparkly leaves. They're really pretty. And so you can see a lot of my tree, fruit trees have gone dormant. We have pears, we have um, fig, um, pomegranate, plum, almond trees, passion. This is a passion vine. And this has been here for two years now. The first year it didn't, it died back as soon as it got cold, but they came right back up. Now, this year, it's trailing the fence line, is, which was our goal, so it can trail the whole line, fence line. And now it's not dying back in the winter. So hallelujah for that. Another cottonwood tree. Goji's. Goji's go dormant too. So this goji bush looks dead. As soon as spring starts, you'll start seeing little green leaves popping all around them, coming out the sides. This is a goji, a black goji. It has a lot of thorns on it, but it has really good black goji berries on it. I believe this one is a fruit, a fruity mulberry. So I got a bunch of fruit and mulberry trees and I planted them all around. Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle kind of goes dormant. You can see it kind of changed color. It's not dead though. Kind of turned kind of fall color of the leaves. Here I have more stinging nettles. You can see the little babies there. Springtime, they'll jump up and turn into a nice big bush. Then back here, we have uh, lemongrass. You can see it's changing colors for the winter. Changing pretty colors. Usually, depends on, depending on how thick it is, it'll die back. But so far, this one's not really dying back. Sometimes it'll die back all the way down. This one's not, and I think it's because it's so thick. It got pretty big during the spring and summer. So, and we've had cold, uh, freezing weather almost every night. You know, below 30, I think 35 is freezing. So anything below that, your stuff is gonna freeze. And it's not bothering this bush here. So there's a lot of things we have planted out here. I have goldenrod in here, and then I have a bunch of turmeric roots. And I noticed with turmeric, they'll pop up as soon as it gets really hot. So I'm hoping that they'll wake up in the summertime and I'll have half turmeric and then half uh, the goldenrod herb right here. And then we planted a bunch of different greens. Greens don't really get affected uh, by the cold, which is cool. This is bok choy here. I believe this one is a Russian sage, a whitewash Russian sage, I believe. And, um, chard and we have um, cilantro one of my favorites they they're they're growing well I started I planted them in the late fall so they sprouted because it was still hot enough and then they all took over the little garden beds is what I wanted so when springtime hits um, all these beds should get real nice nice and full with the greens here and the bok choy actually started flowering. <laughs> it started flowering. I try to cut some of the flower tops off, but it keeps coming, coming back up to flower, so. This tree here is dormant. This is another shade tree. Uh, grows very good from cuttings. It's a Chinese elm or Japanese elm. 
they grow extremely fast. Um, I would say they're second in line to the cottonwood. Cottonwood grows extremely fast and then you have uh, these. And these are pretty much planted for shade, shade trees around the yard. Lots of mulch. Our goal is to completely have the whole entire garden like this with mulch because mulch will break down and break down and um, make the soil very fertile. So here, what we're trying to create here is the promaculture method is where you kind of replicate the forest. The trees grow, the leaves fall, fertilize the soil. Uh, so everything is organic. Uh, back here we have a uh, mugwort. Yeah. It dies down on the top and then springtime everything wakes back up and it comes all back up again. You can see a bunch of little babies down here coming up from the root. So it's best to you know harvest the herbs before winter time. I like to make tinctures out of these. Um, you see we have oregano here, rosemary. Rosemary does pretty good winter time. All these plants stay green during the winter. Oregano, oregano. This is a tea tree. The tea tree that uh, they make tea tree oil out of. Winter time it loses a little bit of its leaves. Um, but it really doesn't get bothered too much here in zone eight. It can withstand zone eight, so I think it's zone eight, nine, ten is the tea tree plant. Uh, some more yarrow. Doing really good. I have pink yarrow and then I have white yarrow. I believe I have yellow. I like to grow the different colors. Another cottonwood tree. Very, you see, it's very nice and thick, grown also from a little tiny cutting, one year old, and it's extremely tall. It's probably, this one's probably 20 feet tall, which is the goal that we were trying to achieve around here. Get lots of nice, fertile trees so we can do permaculture style gardening. This is a nice uh, nettles, nettles, stingy nettles cluster. This came up from the root. I think I planted some roots last year. Could have been the year before. They kind of went dormant. I thought they died off and they're coming back now. Uh, so I guess the roots were marinating for, for a while and they're coming back strong. Stingy nettles is a very good plant to have. It has a lot of medicinal benefits. Um, this is thyme. We have uh, a lot of different varieties of it. Another tiny stingy nettle plant coming up. It's another lemon cypress. And this little guy is a bay tree that I planted. It's doing good. I cover him with a pot at night. I just want to be on the safe side. So at night I just put this pot right over him. Just to give them a little more insulation and it's been working fine. This is the rue plant. Um, I believe this is used for earaches. You can make an ear oil with this. Everything here we try to grow is either medicinal, um, edible, fruits and vegetables, or shade, even our shade trees are pretty uh, medicinal. Like the cottonwood has a lot of medicinal benefits. We raise rabbits and chickens and they can eat the leaves of the cottonwood along with the mulberry leaves. So we try to grow everything that can work hand in hand with the homestead, everything that the animals can utilize too. Uh, 